Hey guys, welcome to a new episode. Today's episode we have the all new Ryzen 7 9800X 3D processor. So a lot of leaks, a lot of rumors have been coming around about this little guy, the 9800X 3D. You see, the reason why all this happens is because the X3D series of processors has a good reputation that it has to actually live up to. And this is all courtesy of the first generation of X3D processors we saw a couple of years back. It started off with the 7800X3D. The 7800X3D was the best gaming processor you could actually find in the market. Of course, to be declared the best gaming processor, there are a few variables and factors you have to look at as to which was mainly power drop performance and price so as a whole, as a total package the 7800x 3d exceeded everybody's expectations so with the first generation of x3 processors amd stuck to its guns digged deeper into r d and came up with the second generation of x3 processors of which the 9800X3D is the first that we are going to be seeing today. So what matters for X3D processors are actually the size of the L3 cache you can actually find on these processors. For X3D processors, you've got a 96 megabyte L3 cache. Whereas when you look at the vanilla version of processors, the 7700X or the 9700X or 9600, 96 or 9900X, you will only find a 32 megabyte L3 cache. So with second generation of X3D processors, you have the new 3D V cache placed directly below the CPU core. Okay, and the best thing is that for this second generation of 3D V cache, the size actually matches the CPU core itself. So you may ask. Why increase the size of the 3D V cache and place it under the CPU core? The CPU cores in a processor have access to direct cooling from your IHS. So when the 3D V cache is placed below the cores, the cache at the back actually has also direct access to the cooling from the IHS. Okay, because of the matched sizing, okay. Whatever CPU cooler you place on top of your processor can also cool down CPU core and also the cache that is placed under it. And another thing about the 3D V cache is that it's not really hot like how a CPU core would be. Okay, so this 3D V cache also acts as an insulator to the processor, whereby it also helps in adjusting or regulating the CPUs adjusting and regulating the cost temperature. By doing this, okay, your processor definitely run cooler. It doesn't reach its TJ max and you get better performance basically. So the 9800X3D has a base clock of 4.7 gigahertz and a maximum boost clock of 5.2 gigahertz. When you compare it to its predecessor, the 7800X3D, okay, the 7800X3D only had a base clock speed of 4.2 GHz and a max boot speed of 5 GHz. So with the improvements and the research and development done from AMD, this new processor has an increment of 500 MHz on the base clock and 200 MHz on the boost clock. AMD claims that this processor has a maximum power draw of 162 watts. How far this is true, we will only find out later on because we do not want to see a repeat of what the 9000, the 9900 or the 9700X series of processors were like because they came out of the box with a power limiter. Upon releasing the power limiter, you could see the wattage or the power drawing go insanely high up. So let's hope this is not the case. So starting off with our benchmarks, 
We've ran a couple of gaming benchmarks and we've also ran synthetic benchmarks, of which the games that we ran were Black Myth Wukong, Cyberpunk 2077, Guardians of the Galaxy, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Our synthetic benchmarks we did Cinebench R23, Cinebench R24, Blender 4.2, Corona 10, V-Ray. You will see in the next subsequent flow of images the charts for the benchmarking results. Have a look and I'll let you all know what is it all about at the end of it. So before everything, I'm going to put it out there that this video, everything that we've actually used in this video have been sponsored by AMD. Okay, AMD has sponsored us the processors, they've sponsored us a kit of RAM, they've sponsored us storage solution, and last but not least, an amazing motherboard to go with the whole overall testing process. Just because we're sponsored by AMD does not mean that there will be prejudice and biasness in this review. Okay? This review conducted by me and our team here okay, is completely independent and it's not influenced by any of the brands. So you've actually seen the benchmark results across certain titles, certain testing platforms. You actually see how the 9800X really performs against its competitors. There are instances where it's way ahead of its competition. There are instances where the gap is very minimal. However, now let's bring a few other factors into the, into the overall scenario today. Those scores on those charts and everything say one thing that the gains from the 9800X3D over 7800X3D or the 4900K is from a region of 1% all the way up to 20%. Okay? Those, those data do not lie to you. Okay, that is the truth. There are improvements. Okay? In like I've told you earlier, in some areas it's marginal, in some areas it's too big. So on that perspective, on that basis. This little boy has really outperformed even the 7800X 3D. Now coming back to the few other factors I'm going to put into play right now. Okay, I'm going to bring in power draw and pricing. Okay, power draw is where this guy is untouchable. Okay, 
AMD claims you can draw 162 watts maximum. Truth be told, the highest I actually managed to draw was only 153 watts. Okay. That is almost 10 watts lesser than what AMD claims. And if you look at its competition, the 7800X3D, I mean, look at its predecessor, the 7800X3D only drew roughly the same figure. If you look at Team Blue, it's a mind-blasting scenario with 200, 300 watts of power being drawn at the 4900K. So when you've got this at 150 watts versus 200, 300 watts, it's a no-brainer that this boy wins hands down easily. Now we bring in the price factor. The 70, okay, I'm not going to talk about the 7800X3D because AMD has already ceased selling it now. We're going to look at current generation. The current generation of processors, you've got the 9700X, you've got the 9900X, and then you've got the 4900K and the Core Ultra 9. The Core Ultra 9 and the 4900K is being priced at 2500 ringgit and above. The 9700X is being priced at RM359. This, sorry, USD359, not RM359. This is being priced at USD479. It's a huge jump when you compare it to the 9700X. But when it touches USD 479, it is very close to being priced at USD 499. You know what's at USD 499? The Ryzen 9 9900X. The problem or the stumbling block or the obstacle that this guy would face is actually the 9900X. The 9900X is an excellent hybrid processor. It's good for gaming, it's great for workstation related tasks. 9800X 3D is excellent at gaming. It's nowhere close to the 9900X when it comes to workstation task. So when you look at that price point, you are going to be torn between two choices. Going for the better gaming processor or going for the multitasking king. So it all falls back to you. It all falls back to the consumers. Who are you? Who are me? Are we going out to build the ultimate gaming machine? Or do we want a jack of all trades but a master of none? So if you ask me, my perspective, if my PC is going to be built solely for the purpose of gaming, I'm definitely going for the 9800X3D. Because $20 to $30 USD difference matters a lot in Malaysia. You're not only looking at the conversion of the exchange rate, but you're also looking at taxes and also distributor markup, retail markups. So that plays a huge role when pricing is brought into the equation of the valuation of this processor. All in all, if you ask me, honestly, this is the new king of gaming. There's nothing coming close to this. Unless AMD drops a bombshell and releases a 9900X 3D or a 9950X 3D that is going to eclipse this. Great job, AMD. I really hope you all continue this. Thank you. See you all in the next one. And if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe.